Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hello, it is the synthetic nuts of spiritual shaming here. And I'm asking you at the beginning of this video instead of at the end to please like, comment, so we can talk, we talk. You and me. Anyone else who wants to interject. And please do subscribe. Make me make me feel happy. Make me feel warm inside. Please. Make me feel warm inside. Uh yeah, so I got a very weird story for you. Um frankly kind of a creepy story, to be honest. Um this was uh back when I was probably about fourteen years old and it was uh customary for me and my friends to smoke weed every day after school. And so we had a really nice little spot we would go to. We would uh, <coughs> grab our bongs, go to our dealers because, hey, weed was way easier to get as a kid than booze or cigarettes. Um, and there's this nice little street, a very, very little street, you know, and you're one of those things you'd pass and if you blinked you'd miss it. But you can see the entire city span from this street. Um, completely unfettered view of one bridge all the way out to the other. See the freighters moored. You can see the, uh, the various, um, what would you call it? like aquatic, aquatic traffic? I don't know. Ships doing their thing. Boats doing their thing. Really nice place. <clears throat> great, great area to get stoned. So we'd go to this uh, park called Meditation Park. And um, uh, it was right, right by the kind of industrial areas along the port. Uh, and so we would get stoned as, as hell. And there, we saw a lot of interesting stuff at this park all the time we spent there. Like uh, there's this, uh, this red apartment building adjacent to the park and i remember there's this guy who used to live there and uh he would just go out on his porch and he would shoot us the stinkiest stink eye i've ever gotten like as he would toss his garbage over the balcony and into the foliage below um yeah yeah lovely little area lovely people and so we met this guy I'm going to call him Pete. And, um, he was a little, little dude. Um, he maybe was five feet tall. I don't know if that counts to be, like, you know, a, a midget, so to speak. Like, I don't know what the, sorry if I'm being offensive, I don't know what the medical terminology is. Didn't have kind of the dwarfism, I guess it is. Um, like, uh, uh the joints that are slightly not so congruent with the rest of the body so i think he was just a really short guy and um he seemed really cool at first like he uh he had this really really good weed um it was like uh this this outdoor organic um oh what was this strain was it was it baba was it baba Kush? um Oh god, I can't remember, but it was strong as all hell. Um, it was an indica, you know, and came in these big fluffy nugs like that. <clears throat> and, um, like, yeah, so we enjoyed hanging out with him because he supplies with some really good weed, some good smokes. Um, and he was a smart guy, like, um, he, uh, and, like, we were really, uh, like, enamored with his story, which was that he's, uh, he's blind because he had some sort of, um, like, retinal cancer. Uh, he wasn't fully blind. He said he had, like, a few little spots, almost like, um, well, someone took a cheese grater to his vision. Um, but, like, otherwise, he was, like, pretty blind. Um, and, uh, he had this little dog with him all the time, a little, little scruffy, fluffy bugger, one of those dogs, um, <laughs> scruffy, fluffy buggers, you know, you know the breed I'm talking about, um, and, uh, he, uh, he would come and he would hang out with us, and, 
But like at the time, it was like, this was before I had really come out of my shell entirely. And um, it was like pretty clear that like one of my friends was like the guy who was leading the charge. He was making the decisions as to what we were going to do, where we were going to go, sort of thing. Um, but P, he honed in on me. And he made it seem like I was the leader. I was the smart one, which may have been true because I was like one of the only ones that this group to graduate high school. <laughs> but, um, uh, and plus I was like in, into educating myself at the time as well. Like if I was to do drugs, I was the one doing the research on the drugs before we did them. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he, uh, he, he made it like I was the leader and, um, this gave me this like, sense of bloated confidence and um like i remember <laughs> one instance of i had a friend i'm gonna call him s uh <clears throat> who was a short little guy at the time um he's grown up he's your man now um and he had long hair and this uh, this guy p said oh you look androgynous um and I was the only one who knew what androgynous meant, so I started laughing because he kind of did. We all did. I, I still look kind of androgynous. I get hit on by older gay guys all the time, and it's very uncomfortable. Um, but, uh, yeah, so um, we had a, this laugh because he's like, what's androgynous? What's androgynous? And we're like... <coughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so we had a lot of good times with this dude, but then... Um, he uh, he started inviting us one by one to his house, which was right along the street where this park was. Oh yeah, and he also got to change the name of the park to Medication Park, which was like like I still call it that now. Um, and it's like the one one good thing took away from the situation. But um, when it started to get weird was uh, like I, I went over to his house a couple times, um, and it was always late. Like like one o'clock in the morning, and we'd go. To, I'd go to hit his his space bag, his uh, one of those vaporizers. Um, like uh, this was back before you know he has stuff like this, like you know little handheld dry herb vaporizers. Um, a volcano, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, you just you know pull out these big bags. Uh, here you go, and I just just. <laughs> Like, these things will rock you, son. Um, <laughs> especially, if, like, that was the first time I hit a vaporizer, too. I remember getting so stoned the first time I went there that I was hallucinating on the way back. Now, weed has a psychedelic property almost all the time for me. I think that's because I've done a lot of psychedelics. I've probably fried my brain just a little bit. Um, but, uh... At that time, you know, this was something I didn't experience um, until then. You know, I hadn't had edibles or anything, so uh, not at this point, anyways. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so I, I, I went to his house I think, the second time. And that's when, when the creepiness kind of started to show its colors. Now, um, I was at his house, skin really stoned, and. Um, he was like, oh, you know what? I used to be a model. And I was like, cool, dude. Cool. Like, I was so stoned, I could barely think. Um, and uh, I was like, here, let me show you. Let me show you. And he, like, pulls out this this booklet. And it's, he's, like, showing me pictures of it was him in the 80s. He had, like, a, the most hilarious kind of mullet and, like, a perm. Um, and uh, I was like, cool, cool, cool. Like, they're all neat pictures. I was like, that's actually pretty neat. Then he started showing me these, like, scantily clad photos of them, and they get progressively, like, more and more risque. Like, uh, you know, him shirtless cowboy hat like that, to him naked with nothing but a towel, like that. And so, it was getting uncomfortable. And he starts throwing these compliments at me, like, you know, you're such a smart guy, and he's, like, really close to me on the couch, like, like, you know, I really, I really enjoy your company, and I think you're the smartest one out of all your friends, and I was like, cool, cool, thanks, man, you know what, you know what, I'm out way too late, like, my parents don't even know I'm out, I gotta get home, because I gotta wake up for school tomorrow, like, yeah, just know you're a really great guy, 
and I really, really like you, and here, give me a hug, I'm like, okay, man. oh, you know, just give me one more hug, because you're such a good guy, that kind of thing, I was like, okay, okay, thanks, gotta go, bye, and so, you know, like, when things took a complete, like, just 180 degree fucking turn into, like, smarmy, this dude's a fucking pedo territory, it was a couple days later. Now, I do fault my friend who this happened to a little bit for letting it happen, because I told him about what I just relayed to you. And, uh, my friends, they had this thing of not going to school, being out all night, and just flailing and partying. And, or not partying, because they didn't even have places to party. They were just, like, running around town high on acid or whatever. Um, and uh, I was like, you know, I still wanted to finish high school, so I was going to school and shit. And so they uh, they somehow ended up at his house. They did. I know they... Uh, didn't get a call from him because they didn't have a cell phone. Um, they must have just shown up and, like, asked to hang out. And so, you know, they, apparently what happened is they did the same thing, you know, got really, really, really fucked stoned. Um, and, uh, one of my buddies left, like, five in the morning or whatever. And, uh, my other buddy crashed on this dude's couch. And he woke up to this dude over top of him. And he was like, uh, hello? Hi there. And the guy's like, can I give you a blowjob? Right? <laughs> like, uh, my friend's 14. This dude's like uh, at least in his 50s. Um, and uh, my friend, though, and all his infinite fucking wisdom, uh, he went back to sleep. What happened? Same thing. Wakes up to this guy, saying, please just let me let me suck your dick. Let me suck your dick. Like, maybe you can suck mine. And, that, and that's when my friend was like, okay, I gotta get the hell out of here. And so he bounced. Um, and uh, oddly enough, like, like at that point, we're like, we, we convened, we're like, we're in, we can't talk to this dude again. If we like, see him, we're like, dude, stay away from us, we're calling the cops on your ass. Um, and I, like, I felt kind of betrayed because, like, you know, I think he built up my ego so much. Like, he was legitimately grooming me. Um, and then just, like, it just, that shattered when, it reali when I realized he was doing this for his own sick purposes. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just deviant, uh, like, sociopathic behavior. Um. Beyond, beyond manipulative, um, and so, uh, we actually didn't see him for a while, like, uh, um, he just kind of disappeared, and then, like, six months later, I know a year later, I'm walking down a street that's, like, fairly close to this park, and, uh, I see him, he looks completely different, like, uh, he kind of looked like an old sort of hippie when we met him. And, uh, like, now he's, like, got short hair, and it's, like, dyed, like, like, sandy blonde or something like that. Uh, obvious dye job, though. Um, very short. Leather jacket, like, looks very different. And start talking to him, he's like, oh, yeah, 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 the kids look sick delk, right? Well... I, uh, I tried some peyote and, uh, like, uh, 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 like, okay, cool, 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 gotta go, bye. And then didn't see him for a while after that. <clears throat> but there were rare sightings of pee from my friends, um, and they said <clears throat> every time they saw him, he looked different. Um, and, like, I think this dude just built a lot of what he did on lies. Like, I don't even know if he was actually blind at the end of the day. I mean, he did kind of walk like he was blind. He did uh, have the stick. He did have glasses. So, I, I mean, that he may not have been lying about. I think he did play that up to, uh, like, give us this impression of vulnerability in him. Like, you know, if he was going to try anything, we could, like, just, you know... Like, like, lead him into a wall and then book it, you know? Um, 
Uh, but uh, like he said this stuff, like, you know, there's a really, really big pot society in um, BC, and I think all of Canada, and he said he was one of the founding members. I'm pretty sure in retrospect that's bullshit. But we thought because his uh, weed at the time was so good, that must have been true. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, that, was, that was some creepy, creepy shit, man. Like, not the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me, but, like, uh, definitely, like, that felt like grooming, you know? We were being conditioned into, uh, thinking that, like, you know, this dude is such a great, high-standing member of the cultures we're personally invested in, that his word about us, like, actually having intelligence and leadership qualities and all that were legitimate and, um, that, you know, we could only get our ego boost from being around him. And I think that fits stuff like what child molesters do to a T, if given the opportunity. It was very calculated. Um, he knew without a doubt what he was doing. Um, and, uh, it's, yeah, just, just beyond greedy, completely reprehensible, and, uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of shit, like, if I saw him today, I would death the fucking dude. Um, like, you know, that's not cool by me. That's not cool. You don't have, for one, unconsensual fucking sex with people. I mean, I guess he did ask my friend, but still, my friend was underage, so that's the other thing. Underage, way, way, way underage. Like, dude, I'm, like, not even 30, and I don't even want to be with women who are, like, 21. I find that weird. Like, unless they're very, very mature for their age. Like, you know, I was with a chick once in Alberta, and um, I was at my cousin's graduation party. My cousin was 17. I was about 21 or 22 at the time. And uh, so I thought this one girl who was, like, really, like, hitting on me and stuff was my cousin's age. And I actually carded her. I'm like, no, no, I'm just a friend of the family. I'm 25 here. <laughs> there you go. I was like, okay, 25? Boom, let's do it. Um, yeah, you know, like, I just can't comprehend why, why people feel the need to go out of their way to get sexual gratification at the expense of others like that, especially young people where they are um, like they're instilling trauma in them that can completely derail their development and can instill similar gratuitous desires because that's you know how abuse I think happens like it's this cycle of behavior that um, is just just wretched in every way that normalizes that behavior to someone else. Um, and then they find out it's not so normal, and they closet that part of themselves, and loopity 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 loop, generation after generation after generation after generation of diddling or, you know, domestic abuse, that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's unfortunate it happens, but it happens a lot. Like, um, you know, I this certainly isn't the only creepy instance I've experienced or my friends have experienced, as I said. We live in a city, there's a lot of degeneracy, that's for sure. But, I mean, there's also a lot of good people, but, you yeah, know, whatever. That's beside the point. I'm, I'm not going to try to, like, like offset it with some some parallel. Uh, but, yeah, in any case, that's 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 the story. It's pretty weird, pretty wild. I've got other creepy stories if you guys want to hear it. Do let me know. Some thick, not so spiritual shaming. I'm going to fucking catch you later. Have a good one, y'all.